Today I'm going to bring you up to speed with what I've been doing on the USS Nimitz. Hi guys, it's James from JJ Model Making here. Um, I thought I'd bring you up to speed with what I've been doing on the USS Nimitz 2027 build. So I've had the kit for a couple of weeks now and um, what I've been doing in the meantime is basically getting it all ready to um, start doing all of the scratch building and detailing that I want to do onto the kit. Um, so if you haven't already seen the first video um, on the build and if you haven't, click on the link in the top right hand corner bring you up to speed. Um, basically I bought the kit second hand or possibly third hand off of eBay and I've been basically getting it all prepped. I've been sanding, I've been cutting, I've been doing a bit of uh, filling as well to try and get everything back to the square base in which to start building the kit. So what I've done so far is basically hollow out lots and lots and lots of the sponsons here and the vents on the side of the ship. So they're basically cutting away the plastic of all of these and these are the ones you can see hollowed out here I'm going to be scratch building the interior. Um, so basically you're going to try and sort of be able to see some of the inner workings of the ship which would be good and then the final holes which are just too teeny weeny to do much with. Here's a good one here. So basically so we can have a, an open vent, so an open port here but you can see the mesh here so this is um, very kindly given to me by a guy called Rick I met off of Facebook and um, on one of my blog groups and um, yeah this is now the right scale so this is fantastic but also as part of bringing the Nimitz up to 2027 or the way I see it I've scratch built this particular sponson and needs a bit of filling work it's stuck on now so it's all made out of um, styrene sheet which is really really fun to build and again you can see a few more of the access hatches or I think they're air conditioning vents to be honest with you um, with the, um, the mesh behind them. And then over on this side, back at the stern, these are two are sort of a bit more further advanced in terms of the scratch build. So basically they've been hollowed out and then sort of just roughly cut to size inside basically. Used a resistor for a bit of uh, detailing. You can basically sort of see how the effect comes out hopefully. Focus, okay. Um, so these are the ones I've been working on. Basically, it takes a while to sort of or cut a size, obviously, and sand it and glue it down. So, so those the other day, and try and do some of these over the weekend, hopefully. The port side of the ship has got a lot more um, vents to seal up with the photo etch. So, I'm going to be working on that for the next couple of nights, I think. But these, um, this side's got two much more serious looking uh, vents cut into it. Basically you're going to try and sort of um, show some of the extra little lifeboats that sort of get stuck on the side here or the support craft. Rather here's one as an example from the old Missouri ships of that nature. So basically what I've done is I've built sort of the frame of what the detail is going to be. So I'll have this here and then I'm still going to do the same level of detail as I did over this side but basically stick it to the inside of here rather than having it all free hanging. So this is a 3mm I think um, styrene so it's a lot harder to cut and also one in the back here and here you can see a bit more of the photo etch grating all stuck on which is good. Another sponsor which is all scratch built so that's all stuck on as well needs a little bit of tarting up here and there. You can see again some of the uh, venting. And then uh, two minds whether or not I'm going to rebuild the existing stern plate or um, make a new one to sort of have the, the double width on because I think the limits are new. Basically you can see here, only sort of stuck out this far here but I might have it all the way over to here. We shall see, not sure yet. So yes, that's the rough plan. Work on the exterior walls, work them in through to the middle, sort out the elevators, sort out the interior of the hangar deck, paint the hangar deck, build the scratch build walls of the hangar deck, 
paint the hanger deck walls, stick everything down, then I can start putting some of the aircraft in if I really want. But once that's all ready, then I'm probably going to paint the paint and detail up the outside of the hull, get that all painted and sorted so that I don't have to start manhandling all that around with lots of aircraft inside, but I don't want to do that. So yeah, lots to do, it's a long, long, long way to go yet, better get in there slowly, it's, it's very fiddly. I'm not overreached, I haven't overbidden what I want to do, it's just, just taking a bit longer than I possibly maybe anticipated to get it all built, but it's, you know, it's fun, it's okay. So we'll get there in the end. So thanks for watching. Um, let me know if you've um, got any theories of uh, any enhancements I'd like to see on the kit. I'm going to try and do a weathering tutorial video, so that's some good feedback on the Oliver Hazard Perry kit. So I'll get that um, done soon. So yeah, at various intervals, I'll need a bit of a break from the limits. Um, so I get total burnout. I'll be stuck my hand together with super glue, putting the fence together. So if you want to stay up to date with the progress on this, hit that subscribe button or. Uh, yeah, at least click the like button if you uh, find this of interest. So thanks for watching and um, happy modeling. Take care. Bye bye.